Topic 11, Lesson 4, Equivalent Fractions. Well, so far you've used a fraction to name part of a whole. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to find two different fractions that name the same part of a whole. And our standard is to explain why a fraction A over B is equivalent or the same to a fraction N over A over N over times B by using visual fraction models with attention to how the number and the size of the parts differ, even though the two fractions themselves are the same size. And we're going to use this principle to recognize and generate equivalent fractions. Our mathematical practice is we're going to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. We're going to reason abstractly and quantitatively. We're going to construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Our focus is how can you find two fractions that name the same part of a whole. So that's what we're going for, the same part of a whole, but they, there's two different fractions. Well, let's take a look at some vocabulary here. First of all, fraction. Fraction, it describes one or more parts of a whole that is divided into equal parts. So one part cannot be smaller or larger than the other. Every single part that you break up the whole into must be exactly the same size in order for it to be a fraction. So here's one fraction. This is one half. And the number on top is a numerator. The number on the bottom, denominator. And one of the ways to remember this is the one on top is up. So up, up. And of course the denominator, down. The one on the bottom. So it, it looks like it's 1 over 2, but the correct way of seeing this one is 1 half. Numerator on top, denominator on bottom. Now an equivalent fraction, it named the same part of a whole. So let's take a look at our example right below here. We have, again, 1 half, and we have a circle here, and half of it is shaded in yellow. And then we also have 2 fourths, another fraction. But if you look here, even though the same circle is divided into four parts instead of two parts, the parts that are shaded, the two yellow parts, are exactly the same amount of space or name overall uh, parts as one half. So one fourth equals two fourths. And we know that also, if you take a look, think about it, four, half of four is two. So two over four is the same as one half. Let's take a look at this. What we have here is three holes. And the first one is divided into three parts. So we can take a look at it that way. We know that this is really one third, this is one third, one third. So this whole part here is one whole, and it's divided into three parts. So we really could say 3 over 3 is the same as 1 whole. That makes sense. So the part that we're, that's shaded is 1 third of the whole. Now if we continue, let's take a look. And we're going to divide this, start off with thirds, but then we're going to go right down the middle of that third. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 6 parts. It's still a whole. In fact, it's the same shape and size as the one above it. But this time, we're going to go ahead and shade two parts. And even though we're shading two parts, we're really going to be having the same amount of space. So this is really 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6. But right here, it's 2, 6 is the same as 1 third. So that's an equivalent fraction. Let's keep going. Let's go down and again we'll start off our same cutting it into three parts and then we'll go back and put it into our sixes and then we're going to go ahead and divide it one more time down the middle of each of these sections and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now our whole 
same whole piece has been divided into six parts. Sorry, 12 parts. So the whole part is, the whole thing is divided into 12 equal parts. Now I know the lines are a little off, but you get the picture. So we're still going to be able to shade in right here. We'll shade in the same area, but instead of one third or one six, we're actually going to have this is one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, and one twelfth. Well, now we've got four twelfths. So what we're saying is four twelfths is the same as two six and one third. So here we have it. One third is the same equal to two six, which is the same as four twelfth. These are equivalent fractions. Even though they look different, they actually have the same value. They have the same amount of space and the same number of parts if you put it all together. All right, pause the video and see if you can do the same thing. We start off with one fourth. We take the same whole piece, but we put into fourths and see if you can go ahead and find equivalent fractions to one fourth. Good luck. All right. How'd you do? So for one fourth, that would be this section right here. Pretty easy. And we can just label it one fourth. All of these are one fourth. So now let's go ahead and cut the second one in the same place. So we still have our fourths. And they're going to kind of cut it right in half of each of these. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have eight parts. And we want to shade in the same amount of space right here. So now we're going to have this is one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. All of these are one eighth in exactly the same amount, even though they don't necessarily look like it by my lines, but they mean they have the same value. We're going to go ahead and go with it. So here we are. Now it's 2 eighths is the same as 1 fourth. Let's try one more. So again, we start off with our fourths. And then we'll cut that in to 2. So we have our eighths. And we're going to cut these one more time. And now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So each of these are 1 16th. And again, we can shade in the same amount of space as the ones above. And what we get this time is 1, 2, 3, 4. Even though each of these are 1 16th, we're actually all this together is 4 16ths. So what we're saying is 1 fourth is the same as 2 eighths, and that's the same as 4 sixteenths. Is that what you got? Good. Now try some on your own. Good luck.